So the equation of a circle, that's where we want to be at. Okay? If we want to graph a line, we want it to be in y equals mx plus b. If we want it to be in uh, graphing a circle, that's what we want to be at as well. So to graph the circle, we got to know two things. We got to know where that center is located, and then how big to make that circle. We went back a couple weeks and I reviewed the definition of a circle with you. You got to know two things: where's the center located, and then how big to make that circle. Those are the only two things you need: the radius. Okay. So when we bring those two things together, that is our equation to put out there. So that center, that's what we are going to use as HK. Okay. HK is now going to represent our center. And then R is going to represent that radius. Now, in this here, this is going to be tied into A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Hopefully you can kind of see height inside of that equation. It is being derived from uh, that theorem. Okay? It is being derived a little bit from our Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to get completely the derivation of it. Hopefully, at least you can see that I can see, hey, a squared plus b squared uh, equals c squared is that hiding inside there. So the h and k is our center, uh, the uh, center, and the r is in our radius. So that's our sweet spot. That's where we want to be. So let's start getting comfortable using it, and then in just a few minutes, we're going to bring in our completing the square work. Okay? So if we have something centered at, I'm going to come back to letter A something centered at 3, negative 5. That is our center. That is our HK. Of course, our radius is 6. What is the equation of that circle going to look like? Okay. So put it into our formula. Just like if you had the slope in the y-intercept and you wrote our equation of y equals mx plus b, now we just move on to the next step here today, guys, of the equation of the circle x minus a squared plus y minus a squared plus r squared. All right? So what's it going to be? x what? x minus 3 squared plus y. What's going to happen there? I'm sorry. Plus 5, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I get that fan going. Plus 5. So as we look at that, it says y minus k. We've seen that before, too, where those two negatives become a positive. Where have we seen that happen? The negative year? We saw that with the distance formula. Distance formula is merging here with the factor. Hey, um, what's up? Hey, what's up? Don't forget, the biggest thing students then also forget is 6 squared. 6 squared is? That's it. That is representing the circle that is at the center of 3, negative 5, and then center, uh, or sorry, that has been a radius of 6. That's what we're working today. Okay? Nothing too crazy. Going on with that. Well, if I go back to letter A, what's that equation going to look like? If I have a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 8, what's that going to look like? <coughs> x minus 0 squared, right? Plus y minus 0 squared equals 8 squared, which is plus 0. Yep, 64. Nothing crazy. Don't overthink this. Now let's clean that up though. When you say x minus 0, what's x minus 0 squared become? Yep, just x squared. And y minus 0 squared becomes? And, six, well, 64 is just 64, right? So if you have one of those coordinates that is, say, 0, we're just going to say x squared or just say y squared, okay? Just kind of clean that up a bit. All right? So x minus 0 squared ain't wrong. But we usually just put that to say x squared. It's crazy. Now, reverse it. <coughs> now, I give you that circle that's been created for you on letter C. Reverse it for me. 
and write me the equation of that circle that's given to you. So I'm going to give you a minute. Find the center, find me the radius, write me the equation of that circle. Okay? So let's go ahead and move it. And let's now finally bring in all that work we've been doing with complete the square with that right there. Okay? Let's merge it with complete the square and the equation of a circle. So everything for the equation circle, in order to identify that center and that radius, has to be in that point. Okay? And as we work with the equation of a uh, slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, if it wasn't that form, we re 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 da, 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 we rearranged things, we got into that form. Okay, going back to 7th and 8th grade, we did it in semester 1. We're going to do that here today. So, as we do that, this page, they've done an example for us. Well, that's great, but let's work it out ourselves. Okay? So let's do letter A right here. Find me letter A on page 713. And let's do that together here. Okay? Number 3. Let's go find letter A. All right, let's get crazy. Let's do our complete the square here. We're going to do our complete the square here. As we do it, we got to do it twice. We're going to do this twice. We're going to do the x's. We're going to do the y's. Okay? So as we do this, we first want to kind of rearrange things that we have the x's grouped together, we have the y's grouped together. Okay? So let's kind of get things in order. Uh, x squared plus, nope, sorry, minus 2x. Now leave yourself some room. We want to create um, <coughs> that constant term that's going to make this factorable, just like we do with complete the square. Leave myself some room. And then uh, group those y's. <laughs> y squared plus 4y. And that constant term that's already there, that four, what have we been doing with that complete the square? We've been kicking it to the other side, haven't we? Okay. So let's click that four to the other side, and what's that going to become? Negative four, right? So we're going to do absolutely the exact same thing we've been doing. We're going to complete the square not once, but twice. So let's do that. Same question we keep asking. Eva? Wouldn't the 4 be able to like go into the 4 line? Um, we don't know where that 4 actually is going to be going to who that goes with. So that constant is going to come over to here. So with that x is then, create me that perfect square trinomial. How do we find that new constant term? One more time. We always do what? 1 half times negative 2 squared. Now I'm going to show you my work just like we did all that before just for that first time through and whatever you do to one side we got to do to the other. It's okay if we go into letter B we're not going to use letter B. What is 1 half times negative 2 squared? Yep. It gives you one right there. We've not done anything new. We've done completing the square here. There's my perfect square trinomial. How does that factor? X minus x squared minus two x plus one. How does that factor? X minus one, x minus one, x minus one squared. It should always factor into the same two quantities. Okay. Now let's pause on the x's. Let's go do the y's. Same thing on the y's. One half times, we're doing the y's now. We're not doing anything super crazy. We've done all that heavy lifting already to complete the square leading up to this. You just got to do it twice. Do it for the x's, do it for the y's. And whatever you do here, Got to keep a balance, so what do I got to do? Add it to the other side. 1 half times 4 squared. What is 1 half times 4 squared? 
Yep, so 1 half times 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Okay. And there is my other. You're going to create two perfect squared trinomials there. Okay? Factors nicely. It always should. What is y squared plus 4y plus 4? <coughs> and what you just created, right there, you just found your center. That should start to look like right now the center <coughs> for the equation of the circle. On the right hand side, there's your radius. Your radius, you got to clean it up. Well, what is negative 4? Now, this is right here. This is coming from the x's. That is a 1. It's that same 1 right here. This was coming from the y's. Hey, you did. And then that second one, this is coming from the y's. That's at 4 coming from right here to keep that thing balanced. And that right there creates the, the radius squared, creates the r. So what is negative 4 plus 1 plus 4 give you? It gives you 1. Okay? That is the equation of our circle. That's where we want to be at today with trying to use our completing the square method. So now tell me those two things. What is the center? The center is located where? Extract out the center's location. What is that HK that you're just doing? Uh, extract it out. When you extract it out, reverse the signs. So let's go back to when you plug those in. When you plug those in, see how 3 was negative 3, negative 5 became its opposite. The reason why those are different is because our equation says x minus h, y minus k. So whenever you extract out that center, you're always going to extract out the opposite. So as I go back to our problem here, the center is at what? 1 comma negative 2. Okay? We're extracting out the opposite. 1 comma negative 2. What's my radius? Now my radius, this one's not a stellar example, I don't like it. This is equal to r squared. In our equation is equal to r squared. So I'm always going to set that equal to r squared right here. The fortunate part is r squared equals 1. What's the square root of 1? You can just kind of luck into, into that. Okay? Um, but hopefully, I, if I remember on the next one, that doesn't turn out to be the case in the second one. So, we did our complete the square right here. We're going to extract out the center. We're going to get the radius then. And that's what we're going to work on today. Let's do another one. Let's do letter C. Follow our steps that we did up above. We did add in this is anything brand new today. We'll just merge our complete the square with getting to the equation. So, we just get to do it twice. That's as crazy as it does right there. Letter A. Group those x's, group those y's. Leave yourself some room. Group those x's, guys. Look at the steps that we did just above. Leave yourself some room on those x's. Leave yourself some room on those y's. And that constant term, if there is one, kick it to the other side. Negative 51. Okay? <coughs> Get yourself set. Create yourself those perfect square trinomials. And 
as you do that, we'll recreate right there, add it to the other side. That right side is going to create that R squared. This left side will create my HK, my center. So I'm just kind of dragging my feet, letting you guys kind of fall through up top there, and I'm going to start filling that in. Now I'm not going to show that one half times the linear squared. You should be able to do that in your head at this game, at this time of the game. It's the same thing we've already done completely with square. One half times negative ten squared gives me a should be a twenty-five here. And that's going to factor into x minus 5. y squared plus 12y. That's going to get you the same deal. 1 half times negative, sorry, 1 half times 12. 6. 6 squared gives you 36. And whatever you do on that left, you got to keep the balance on the right. Every single time. And there it is. There is now your y coordinate. Okay, there's that k coordinate you just found. Y plus six. And then to your calculator you go. What is a negative fifty-one plus twenty-five plus thirty-six give you? So I get a ten out of that. Okay. So we got a ten. And then there it is. Tell me the center. When did somebody get to the center? Center is located at what? Extract out the opposite values. Negative 5 makes it a. Positive 6 makes it a. Again, the reason why we're doing the opposites is because my formula is x minus a, y minus a. That negative 5, if I plug in a 5, The radius is not 10. Don't tell me the radius is 10. Remember, this is equal to r squared. you got to solve for r. We're solving using our quadratics. Solving by square roots. What's the square root of 10? Square root of 10 is, well, square root of 10, right? Can't simplify it. Can't simplify that radical, so that's the best we can say. Okay, so the radius in this case is the square root of ten. The radius does not always turn out to be a, a nice whole number. It could be the square root of ten. It could be irrational, irrational. It just depends. Okay, but the biggest thing I see students absolutely accidentally do is say r is 10 and they're done. <coughs> this is always equal to r squared. You're going to have to square root that thing. Sometimes it's perfect, sometimes it's not. Okay? And that's what we're looking for you guys to be able to do is bring in that algebra work with our geometry today and call it a day. Okay? Now, a couple other uh, things. We're going to leave these here because these are getting into a little bit more of what we um, we're not ready for yet. I complete the square. We said complete the square. A needs to be one. That's just to get more into what I want to do with you right now. Okay. So that's what we do. It gives you some time to get some practice on that. All right. So nothing really crazy because we've already.